we adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. On this 28th day, when I journey in Lent, through this uh, Lenten season, we encounter chief priests who are conniving with the temple guards to go and arrest Jesus. They need to find a word to get him down, to put him down. And the guards come back and they're like, well, yeah, we went, we listened, we wanted to find something, but nothing could we find. And the chief priests are bitter against these people that have you also been converted? How come you failed to get him down? Do you get the irony? Chief priests are asking the police to arrest Jesus, to kick him out of the temple. Chief priests, as in God should be out of the temple. What had happened? Was it pride on the side of the chief priests? Was it poor discernment? Was it some kind of fear? What was it? What was going on on their mind that they couldn't, you know, find out that this is the Lord? Had they closed their hearts to the Spirit of God? What was it? And on this 28th day into this uh, Lenten journey, the Lord wants us to ask the same question. What is it that drives you to desire to kick Jesus out of your life? Think about it like this. A 13 year old boy or child decides to close their parents out of the house. Reason? Uh, they want to. They, they don't want their parents in the parents' house. As in, or they connive with the police or with whatever organization and they're like, Daddy or Mommy, go to custody. Come to punishment. And they, they create cases against you. Your own child creates cases against you. Not something you've done. No. But they come up with some case. This is the chief priest. Okay, let's say this boy is your firstborn. It's like me as the firstborn, we have agreed that you shouldn't enter tonight. And we are asking police to help us enforce that. We cannot talk about it. It's the chief priests who are kicking Jesus out of his father's house, his own house. You know, as we wonder about how this could have been and how could it not have been, have you ever come to that point when you're praying and perhaps you don't get your answer and you feel like, God, how dare you? And you just wish like, I wish I had my way. I would come against you. I wish I could fight you. I could, you know, strangle you, God. Have you found yourself in that situation? Or some bad occurrence happens in your life. Say death of a dear one. Say a divorce. Say something so bad, so painful happens. And you feel like you want to go and strangle Jesus. Remember this friend who tells me one time that, Hey, Father, God is lucky that he's in hiding. I can't see him. But otherwise, the only thing I would think of this moment would be to strangle him. I wish I could get my gun and put him down if I could see him. That's what I'm thinking about now. Yes, we understand the bitterness. Yes, we understand how much you are hurting. But in that same way, you are actually acting like the chief priests 
who are conniving with the police to take Jesus out. We gotta get rid of him. That's why we need to bow down this time of, of Lent and align our minds, align our hearts to his, uh, to his word, to his will. Bow down to his will. Even those times when we don't understand what's going on, we humbly fix our eyes unto him, Jesus on the cross, and seek the meaning, the purpose of whatever is going on in our life. Actually, in Jeremiah chapter 11, that's why we hear this Jeremiah shouting and praising the Lord for revealing the plots against him. If they could lay plots and plans against Jesus, who is God himself, to take him out, to kick him out of the house, to kill him. Remember what he said? If they did this to the green tree, how about you, the, the dry wood? That's why we need to fix our eyes unto Jesus as we hear this wonderful hymn. That fix your eyes unto Jesus because draw closer to him because the plots will come. The strategies to get you out of your job, plots even to kill you, plans to eliminate you, to limit you. So many will come and it's only your closeness with Jesus that we will be able to save you. And it's one of the reasons the Lord insists that we should keep in touch with him. He says pray all the time. Because only he has the latest intel. He got the latest inform intelligence information about people. He knows the true thoughts and plans in the hearts of people. Only he knows. And if we, if we make it a habit to commune and communicate with him, he will definitely give us some security alerts or info to keep at the helm of, our, of the game. That as the enemy plots their thing, they only get you, find you so far ahead. Keep your eyes on to Jesus. And also, uh, you know, this famous TV pre uh, presenter, Steve Harvey, one time was narrating an incident and his plague. Uh, and there is a... Uh, and it, it, this he said there is a blessing behind every pain behind everything and pain always leaves a gift he says and then he goes on to say somebody give me a plaque that said don't worry about the people that God has removed from your life he saw things you didn't see he had conversations you couldn't hear and he made moves you wouldn't make. He says, that's it. And I think in those words, he captures God's purpose for inviting us to draw closer to him. God hears conversations held about you in your absence. He and, uh, helps us to make moves we never could have made or dreamt of. I guess you've met people who are experiencing lots of pain, in perhaps very stressful environments, but they don't know how to move on, how to take the next step. They don't know the next step to take. Yes, we need the Lord. We need to draw closer to Him because only He can help us to take the moves we cannot take. He's able to hear the plus we cannot hear and then enable us to know the next move or protect us accordingly. Jeremiah testifies to the power and joy of surrendering to the Lord and keeping in touch with Him. Let's hear him again. Jeremiah says, Jeremiah chapter 11, I knew their plot because the Lord informed me. At that time, you, O Lord, showed me their doings. That's why the Lord wants us to draw close. And Jeremiah continues to say, Yet I, like a trusting lamb, led to slaughter, had not realized that they were hatching plots against me. They were saying, let us destroy the tree in its vigor. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will be spoken no more. Only God knows. 
That's why he invites us to have that special time, that quiet time, to meditate, to call upon his name, to focus our eyes onto him, to seek his divine wisdom such that he can give us the intel. Lent is that occasion to grow and develop our relationship with the Lord. It's a time to sharpen our minds and hearts, to long for and seek deeply, seek him deeply, such that we can, uh, he can reveal the secrets of, of the hearts and also reveal to us our destiny. Sometimes we are our own enemies. We don't know what to do. We are, you know, locked up in our own thinking, but he's able to unlock whatever it is. Only God will help us know uh, when to stay longer and when to let go. Because God knows all the details and the secret thoughts of people. You know, sometimes we stay longer than we should, and other times we quit faster than we ought. And only Jesus, only closeness to the Lord will enable us to make the best move possible at a given time. Uh, yes, the world will, will can reject you because of their prejudices. And this is another reason why we need to keep in touch with Jesus. Jesus is being rejected not because he's wrong, not because he's done anything crazy, but because he doesn't fit into their categories. The Pharisees had their stereotypes about the Messiah, and such a great one uh, as a Messiah had to look in a certain way, had to be in a particular, from a particular race, from a certain background. They didn't even have to know where he comes from. And so since Jesus didn't fit their categories, they disqualified him, despite his good, his greatness, and his divine origin. But as Paul would say, Romans 8.31, I paraphrase, as long as God is for us, it doesn't matter who is against us. And always remember that you and the Lord are the majority. I and the Lord am the majority. Let us pray. O oh Lord, my God, in you I take refuge. O oh Lord, my God, in you I take refuge. Save me from all my pursuers and rescue me lest I become like the lion's prey, to be turned to, turned to pieces with no one to rescue me. O Lord, my God, in you I take refuge. Do me justice, O Lord, because I'm, I'm just and because of the innocence that is mine. Let the malice of the wicked one come to an end, but sustain the just, O Sahajur, of heart and soul, O just God. Be a shield before me. You are the God who saves the upright of heart. A just judge is God, a God who punishes day by day. O oh Lord, my God, in you I take refuge. And may the blessing of the mighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Shalom.